Would you welcome our guest speaker today with an ORU kind of welcome, John C. Maxwell. Come on, John. Thank you very, very much. You may be seated. I've been privileged to do some university commencements, and I'll have to say, this is, uh, the worship was fabulous. The worship was fabulous. And uh, I, I've come to, to share and add value to the graduates, obviously, but I can tell you, you've added great value to me today. It was just, uh, it's great to see a, a university that just honors God like you do and uh, lifts him up and uh, so thank you for thank you for that thank you very much and dr wilson thank you for this beautiful invitation and faculty and staff administration family members that are here and of course students in my few moments i have with you I, I would like to talk to you about um, advice. When I, when I have an opportunity and I'm with someone, my favorite question to ask them is, what's the best advice that you ever received? And, and who gave it to you? And, and why was it the best advice? And over the years, I have literally had beautiful people, young and elderly, successful, just pour into the, my life and say, well, this was the best advice that I have ever received. In fact, every, um, every Monday, I have a Monday with Maxwell that is watched by several thousand people at noon every Eastern Standard Time, and I'm doing a series right now on, on best advice, and I'm sharing the best advice that I can give or the best advice I've received from other people. And as I thought of you graduates today, I, um, I, I've never taught this teaching, but, but I just thought of you and I thought, I want to share with you the best advice I've ever received. And I want to pass it on to you because I'm sure that there's going to be something that's just going to um, connect with where you are and, and who you are and, and, and where you're going and what you want to accomplish in your life. And so I will give them to you. And, and the first one is just very simple. Find your purpose in life. I was a freshman in my first college that I attended. And, and I had a professor who one day in class said something that has had a profound effect on my life for all these years. He, he looked at us students and he said, there are three questions that you want to ask yourself. And these three questions will, will be a guide for you. They'll be a North Star for you. And he gave me what I call three passion questions. What do you sing about? What do you cry about? And what do you dream about? That started my journey as a freshman to discover the purpose that I had in my life. Because you see, purpose and passion are aligned. What you're passionate about, not always, but most of the time, will lead you to your purpose. And as a freshman in college, the seeds planted to me, in me, by a professor, began to put me on this pursuit of what is my purpose, what is my calling in life, I congratulate you because you're now ready to enter the world and you're going to have a wonderful career. But more than a wonderful career, I want you to have an incredible calling. You see, a, a, a career is what you'll get paid for, but your calling is what you were made for. And what I desire is for that fire to light in you as it did as in my life as a freshman when the prof just asked the three questions. What do you sing about? What do you cry about? What do you dream about? That helped me find my purpose in life. The second advice that I would share with you that I received, I received on this day in my first graduation at my first college, getting my first degree. And this was advice from my father. My father just passed away last July 4th. He was 98. 
And he was an incredible man and an incredible leader. He literally planted 40 churches in his life. He was a college president. And he just, um, he was my greatest mentor. And when I graduated on this graduation day with my diploma in my hand as you're going to receive soon, my father and I spent some time together and I asked him, Dad, as I entered the ministry, what's the best advice that you can give me? And he said to me, add value to people every day. He taught me in those few minutes that we had to every day value people, believe in people, and unconditionally love people. That advice, that advice is the grid for every book that I write. It's for, it's the test for every teaching that I do. Am I valuing people? Am I believing in people? And am I unconditionally loving people? Because my dad said, son, if you'll do that, very few people have anyone that believes in them. Very few people have few that value them. And he said, hardly anyone has anyone that unconditionally loves them. If you'll do those three things, you'll be like a magnet in ministry and people will be drawn to the message that you have. The third advice that I've received in my life is to be intentional with my life. When I was in my 20s, I sat down with another mentor of mine and he asked me what my plan for personal growth was and I shared with him that I had none. And he looked at me and he said, John, personal growth doesn't happen accidentally. If you're going to grow and if you're going to develop yourself, you're going to have to be intentional. And that was a great turnaround in my life. That advice has stayed with me because the only guarantee that your future is going to be better than today is that you are personally growing right now. That's how you expand your growth potential. And I know that you receive a diploma and you say, I've graduated. And sometimes the mistake that we make is we think, wow, thank God. I'm gonna take a break from learning for a long time. <laughs> but I just want you to know, you're never out of school. You're never out of school. Trust me, every day as you learn, and listen, grow, ask questions, what happens is you begin to expand your growth potential. I referred to my father a moment ago. My father literally worked full time up through his 95th year. He sat across the table a couple of years ago from me after we were having lunch at the age of 96, and he said to me, son, look at me. He said, I've been praying about this, I've been thinking about it. He, now get the picture, he's 96. He said, I think my greatest days are still ahead of me. Wow. And if you will be intentional in your personal growth and in your development, if you'll really commit yourself to learning, growing, having a teachable spirit, having a humility about you that allows you to ask questions and listen for advice, I promise you, it will serve you well. Number four, when I was in my late 20s, I had a pastor share with me an amazing advice that has stayed with me all these years. The advice I'll give you and then I'll do the teaching quickly. The advice is to allow what I call God room in your life. In your life you want to um, have a place where God can do exceeding abundantly more than you can ever ask, more than you can ever think, more than you can ever realize in your mind. And God room, to me, is that space between what I can do and what God can do. That passage in Ephesians 3.20, my father taught me as a very young child, and when the pastor shared with me about allowing God room in my life, he said something that just stuck with me. It stays with me today. It's still deep within me. His advice has become the person that I am. He said, John, attempt things so great for God 
that when God does those great things in your life, people who know you will say, that's way beyond anything he's capable of. He said, always have God room in your life so that people will realize that it is God who is the difference maker. That's what I want for you. I wish I could uh, walk among you and lay my hands on you and pray over you because I know that God has a great future for you. So I give you the last piece of advice that I've received that I wanted to pass on today. I only had 15 minutes. (laughs) I would like to meet you somewhere and have a couple of hours with you. The last thing I would share with you is for you to write write the greatest story ever told. When I was in my late 20s, I had a staff member give me a Christmas gift, and it was a book, and when I opened it, the front cover said, the greatest story ever told, and I loved to read, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm, I'm about to read a book that's the greatest story ever told, and I very quickly opened up the book to see what it was all about, you know, go to the table of contents, and much to my surprise, when I opened the book, All the pages were blank. And I looked at her and I said, Eileen, I don't understand. The outside cover says, the greatest story ever told and yet the pages are blank and she smiled and she said, I know. She said, go to the front cover and I went to the front of that book and she had written me a note and said, John, your life is before you. You fill these pages with your hopes, with your passion, with your dreams. You write. You write. You write the greatest story ever told. And I took that book home. And the next day on the first page, this was before I ever wrote any book, I put at the top of the first page, I want to make a difference. I didn't know how I was going to make a difference. I didn't know when I was going to make a difference. But I knew I wanted to make a difference. And at the age of 74, I'm still writing my story. I'm still writing. I'm still filling up the pages. And may I say to you, God has a plan for your life. He has instilled with you the gifts to fulfill that plan. And don't let anyone else write your story for you. It's your story. You're his creation. He has gifted you for such a time as this. And little did I know when I wrote, I want to make a difference, that the story would expand to, I want to make a difference with people who want to make a difference doing something at a time when it makes a difference. And so I'm writing my story. School's not out. And so I want to give a gift to you, my dear friend, Rob Hoskins, beautiful, beautiful leader of One Hope. He and I came together a couple of months ago to write a book called Change Your World. And to be honest with you, I was asked in an interview the other day, how long have you been writing this book? And I said, for 50 years. I'm still writing it, and I wanted to give you, and Rob wanted to give you this book as a graduation gift from us. And so today, when you get your diploma, you'll get a Change Your World book. And listen to me. (laughs) 
And my precious friends, my precious graduates, go change your world. Don't start with the world. Start with your world. And trust me, you will make ORU proud, but you will make the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords proud of you. Change your world. Thank you very much.